All right, let's look at the covalent bond. And what we have to do is, of course, start with our electron configuration. So what I like to do is take a look at a molecule that is held together by covalent bonds. So let's look at methane, that's so CH4, okay, methane. And sometimes you may have seen it sketched, or you will see it sketched like this in, in one plane, in two dimensions. Okay, that's not actually what the molecule looks like, but it's a decent way of depicting it for these purposes. So we've got carbon, these dashes, these solid dashes, um, connected to these hydrogens, and that's that's one molecule. One molecule of methane, CH4. But uh, if we want carbon to bond to four hydrogens, how are we going to do it? And the so well, what we do is uh, let's start with the atomic number. And so for carbon, it's six. And so we know we've got 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So there's four valence electrons. And we need, or we would like to have um, eight in total to get that stable octet. So how are we going to get to the stable octet? Well, if we draw carbon and Say we were just for in a simple model, we're just going to draw the electrons that carbon brings to the table. There they are, and covalent. Covalent means uh, implies some sharing. Okay, so there's the sharing of electrons. Covalent. I mean the valence electrons are the outermost electrons. So covalent I means they're they're outermost electrons for a couple of for two. Um, uh, nuclei uh, shared. What was I trying to write out there? Shared. Yeah, shared. Um, and so then let's introduce hydrogen. And here's hydrogen. It's got its one electron, right? Hydrogen, one proton, one electron. And if hydrogen gets together with this uh, carbon and they share, well, then hydrogen appears to have its stable electron configuration, which actually for hydrogen is hydrogen. Well, what hydrogen wants, if you allow me to anthropomorphize hydrogen to look like its hero in the world is helium. It wants to be like helium, and helium is just 1s2. Okay, so that's the exception to the octet. Um, it's the duet stability, I guess you could call it, uh, for, for helium and hydrogen wanting to look like that. But um, carbon, though, I'm going to draw a little blue circle around here just to show there's those eight valence electrons by sharing with four hydrogens. So the covalent bond involves sharing of electrons and sharing of electrons. And it's also uh, between specific atoms. Okay, there's a term that sometimes we use here, and that term is it's directional. Okay, that is if we go uh, to you know this model here, there's a direction to it that this hydrogen and this uh, carbon specifically are involved in the bond. And if I drew another, if I drew another uh, methane, say. Uh, well, let me just redraw them down here. It's between specific atoms. So we've got carbon here with those hydrogen in, in one molecule of methane. And if I drew another molecule of methane here, there would be no covalent bond between this hydrogen and this one. That'll be a secondary bond. We'll get to that later. But there's it's, it's specific. And not only that, that'll be an interesting contrast to the ionic bond which we'll cover later. Also, because it's shared, because it's shared, you can say, well, is, is a covalent material going to be um, conductive? Well, the electrons are bound to these nuclei. So here we go. This carbon has got a hold on those eight electrons. They're bound tightly to the nuclei. And so there's no electrons available to conduct electricity. 
or even heat. And so covalent materials are typically uh, insulators, non-conductive, and the class of materials that's characterized by or most um, clearly by covalent bonding is the polymer. Okay. Now there are covalent ceramics as well, and you can even yeah, there's covalent ceramics, but uh, typically the the, you know, the the best example, if you will, of a covalent material is a polymer. 